In this video, we're going to go over the Java EE platform, and we're going to do a little bit of an overview of it to see what it is and how the actual EE is different from our SE environment that we should be used to at this point. And we'll talk about who uses the Java EE platform as well as address a few of the tools that we'll both be going over in this course and that are available outside of this course as well through the Java EE platform. So what is Java EE? Java EE is the Java Enterprise Edition. The SE is the standard edition, and the Enterprise Edition, of course, gives us the tools to do business level applications. So the EE provides numerous tools through API Access, which is Application Programming Interface, and those tools allow us to do different tiers on different parts of the application. So we can actually separate our applications out into a business tier or a data tier or a client tier. So how is EE different from SE? Java EE is actually an extension or built upon the SE. So we need to have SE in place in order for EE to work. Of course, that gives us all the tools available in the SE, such as our IO for file access or our utilities if we want to use data structures such as the ArrayList or any of those other tools that are available through Java SE. But EE extends that by providing API access to different tier frameworks that give us the ability to do different things, such as web development or client development for client applications. We can also do our business logic in one place, and it can be separate from the entire application with the ability to access that from a client or from a server. And then, of course, there's information tiers, such as our database and our connectivity to databases and things like that. So each tier has its own separate set of tools, and those are all available to the EE platform, and that allows for many different ways to actually develop applications. So based on enterprises, it may be used in different ways. There may be different tool sets that are required at different jobs. So who uses Java EE? Well, basically, Java EE is used by professional Java developers and enterprises. So people that want to build a robust, solid solution that's available for many different users across different client platforms or different server platforms using data persistence, these would be the people that would want to build their applications in Java EE. So we have different components and different tiers as we go throughout Java EE. They're split up into different tiers for functionality purposes. For example, the web components would be your client tiers and your ability to access your business tiers. And so you'd have in there the JSP and servlets, expression language, Java server faces, and Java beans. Now we'll touch on all of those except for Java server faces in this course. Web services, which are going to be another way to create a gateway for clients into specific parts of business applications. So you have your regular old web services, and you also have RESTful services. We also have the data access tier in the Enterprise Edition, which gives us our JDBC connectivity, which we'll use in this course as well. And there are two other things going along with that that we won't touch on in this course, but you can look into after you've learned about the tools in this course, which is the Java Persistence API and the Java Transaction API. And then there's the business tier, which has persistent entities and enterprise Java beans. So basically what we've seen today is that Java E is a critical framework for professional web development, professional business development, and enterprise applications in Java. The Enterprise Edition relies upon all the knowledge and tools that we've already gained and all of the things available from the Standard Edition, but essentially now we have the ability to extend that and our enterprises can choose the different technologies they want to integrate. And because of the API and tiered access, you don't need to know all of them and you may never work with one or the other, but you know that they're all there available and depending on the solution that you need, you choose the best path to provide that solution based on the tools that are available. That wraps up our quick overview of what the Java EE is and who uses it and how it compares to Java SE.